Google Search came out in 1996, and since then, for the last 27 years, Google has absolutely dominated. They make some of the biggest consumer-facing products in the world with YouTube, Google Docs, and Gmail, and they get 8.6 billion daily searches. But for the last couple of years, they've really struggled against OpenAI, a company that's a lot smaller, but also a lot more innovative with a lot of their AI technology. They released ChatGPT on November 30th of 2022, and since then, ChatGPT has kind of become the Kleenex of AI. Everyone knows it as the go-to. Google has been trying to change that for the last couple of years with Gemini, and today, this was their moment to really cement if they're going to be the winner. Okay, so for Google, there are really three important products to know about. The first one is Gemini Live. Can you give my son Jimmy a basketball example? Hey, Jimmy. That's a fantastic idea. Basketball is actually a great way to visualize force and motion. Let's break it down. Okay, so first, imagine a basketball just sitting there on the court. It's not moving, right? That's because all the forces acting on it are balanced. Gemini Live is a conversational AI that you can talk to without having to hold down the microphone and lift up the microphone. So it makes it feel a lot more like a person-to-person -person interaction versus like when you're triggering Siri or Google Assistant. And it's also conversational, so there's like emotion and tone of voice in the AI when it's responding to you, which is very similar to what OpenAI released yesterday with ChatGPT 4.0. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thanks for asking. How about you? Pretty good. What's up? So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Both of them are kind of giving Black Mirror and her vibes a bit, but the goal is to make them as conversational as possible so it can feel like an extension where you forget that you're talking to an AI, but you're just getting a ton of information or practicing a public speech or maybe getting company. I really hope that the AI girlfriend thing does not take off. Google's advantage here is the amount of tokens that Gemini is able to process. Tokens are like the information that you input, so overly simplified. But for example, the phrase iced coffee could be one token. So the more tokens you're able to input, the better, because that means you can give more context to the machine. And so it went from one million, which was already very high, to two million, which is like astronomically high. It means that if you were studying for an exam, you could like put in every single slide from every single lecture and then ask it to create a study guide for you. I personally thought that the ChatGPT voice model sound a little bit more natural and played off the presenter a little bit better, but we're gonna have to test both of them in the real world. The promise that they're both making is super exciting if it actually works. Same thing with Project Astra, which is Google's second major announcement. And this is multimodal AI, which is basically AI that uses two different inputs to generate the output. What is that part of the speaker called? That is the tweeter. It produces high frequency sounds. So for example, using like your camera and your voice, you point it at something and you're like, hey, help me solve this math problem. And it will interpret that you're saying that, but then also see the actual math problem. Adding a cache between the server and database could improve speed. This is going to change education when it starts really working. And that is just incredibly exciting to me. As someone that loves learning, I feel like if we just lower the barrier to learning, so the only thing that determines if you learn something or not is your work ethic, that is such a win. GPT-4.0, where they also actually presented the same exact idea. Let's look at the problem together. Can you first identify which sides of the triangle are the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? relative to angle alpha. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Fact. Karen's correct. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, Remember really, I'm, the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think, I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle alpha. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and is directly opposite the right angle. Because they're just laser focused on just creating AI, they're able to give it all of the resources versus Google, which is a company that has hardware products and Google Maps, and they also make Google Search. They have a lot of different things up in the air that need a lot of focus. But the fact that they have Google Search, I think could actually be their edge here. They showed some Gemini features where when you search something on Google, instead of having to click on multiple links, you'll just get a summary up top. Now you can ask Search to create a three-day meal plan for a group that's easy to prepare. And here you get a plan with a wide range of recipes from across the web. This one for overnight oats looks particularly interesting. 
And the searches can be very conversational. It doesn't have to be like keyword based at all. You can type it as if you're asking a human and then Gemini will go through the best results and create a conversational answer. That's dope. I think it's gonna change the way we interact with the web browser. And Google's calling this like an agent. And they're using the word agent a lot because there's going to be like a personal assistant Gemini agent element built into a lot of their key offerings. Like in Gmail, for example, you'll be able to have an agent go through your emails and kind of triage them. Eventually you'll have the ability to add a AI assistant as like a team member and you can assign them tasks. We're prototyping a virtual Gemini powered teammate. This teammate has an identity a workspace account, along with a specific role and objective. When this starts really working well, that could fundamentally change the way we do work forever and give us a lot of our time back and make us a lot more productive, which I love. I think that that's an area where Google is a little bit ahead of ChatGPT because OpenAI doesn't make Gmail or hardware or a lot of the software that we use. There's going to be a little bit more of a barrier to entry for them to implement it. Obviously, OpenAI has that partnership with Microsoft, so it can be very implemented into Microsoft products. But for Gen Z, especially in the US, I feel like most of us use Google products and Google Suite. I was in person at Google I.O. and then I demoed a bunch of the stuff and in writing this video, I realized that they actually released a lot of the same stuff that OpenAI released yesterday. They're just not getting the same love online publicly for two reasons, I think. The first one is that because OpenAI released it first yesterday, they got a lot of like the shock factor, first movers advantage of us being super excited about conversational AI. And now that we've seen it, it's a little bit less novel. And then also OpenAI's presentation was 26 minutes and Google's was over two hours. So I feel like if they want to win the AI race, they have to work on their messaging and then also heavily integrating it into all of their products because that is really where their edge is. And it feels like they're aware of that because a lot of the keynote today was focused on, hey, here's this AI, but then here's exactly how you use it in Gmail or Google Photos or on the Pixel. And I feel like that's where they can win. Either way, for us, it's a very exciting time because an AI arms race just means that we're gonna get better and better products quicker and quicker. I'm very excited. If you wanna see my conversation with the CEO of Google, Sunar Pichai, you can click right here. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.